Hey, this is Ryan Turner from VWDiesel.net. Today we are going to be changing the transmission fluid in a B5 automatic. Uh, this is a 5 HP 19 transmission. Um, they're decent enough transmissions, but it's good to keep the fluid changing them, especially if you do a lot of towing like this guy does. So we're going to use our new camera here, try it out, and we're going to change this fluid today. So stay tuned. We're going to start this process with the car already up in the air and looking up from the bottom. With the car suspended up in the air, we are going to remove the drain plug. That is a T50 Torx. Here's a T50 Torx. All right. Slowly loose. Now we're going to slide our drain pan underneath here. You see how there on camera the fluid is kind of dirty but there's nothing really too bad with it. To take the pan loose we are going to use a T27 Torx bit on a small impact driver. Now I like to use the impact driver to hit it onto the uh, Torx to break it loose versus just using a ratchet because I have a lower rate of stripping them out if I do it that way. Now if you just take your little impact and bzz, sometimes it, it does okay too, but I like this method more. Uh, it does take a lot longer, but you risk not breaking them as much as if you just cranked it down there with a ratchet or with a electric impact. Uh, you can find these little uh, impact drivers at places like Harbor Freight fairly cheap and for what they are they work pretty good. So now we're going to get back under the car and remove the bolts. So with our impact we're going to put it in the bolt hole and just simply tap it up till it turns. And I really like doing it this way because if your transmission fluid has never been changed, if your pan's never been down, sometimes these bolts can be a real pain in the butt to get off. And this method just keeps you from having to strip them out. And if you do strip one of these heads out, it can be really a pain to get out because if you notice here, there's a nice lip that runs all down this transmission pan and it's hard to get vice grips or something like that in here. So we're going to remove all the bolts around and slowly let the pan down. So make sure that you have something underneath your transmission on the ground to catch all the fluid that's going to spill. All of the bolts are broken loose so I'm going to go back with my impact now that they're all loose and just zip them all out. I do like to leave a corner in each one when I'm taking a pan off so that the pan just doesn't slosh down on you or fall off while you're doing stuff. And then once you have like say one in each corner, you can go ahead and hold the pan up, take the last two out and then drop it down without making a mess. Right, and you can see on the screen possibly that fluid is just now pouring out of the filter itself. That's why the drain pan or the uh, catch pan underneath is a good idea. So we're just going to hold this here until the most of it is gone and then we'll move the pan out of the way and empty out the rest of the fluid. With the pan removed we're going to check the magnets for the sludge that's on there. Now a typical sludge is fine if you see the tip of my finger it's pretty nasty. And if you feel the magnet here, there's actually, you can feel the little ribs from where it's accumulated in different, different ways. Um, sometimes there is some sticky, gunky stuff on there, but what we're really looking for in the bottom of the pan are metal particles or uh, any chunks of anything, any really burnt smell of the fluid. Uh, this is just a really good and easy way to tell the life of your transmission um, just by looking at feeling it, make sure while it may be a little gritty, it's not going to be super dirty, nasty gritty. Now we're going to start with cleaning up the pan. The seal that is on the pan is often very brittle 
as you can see on this one, it's just going to come apart in pieces. So we are going to get a flat razor here. I put a little piece of duct tape on the handle just to make it a little more safe. And then we're just going to scrape the old, the old one off. This may take two or three rounds to go through here and, and make sure all the material is clean and off of there. And then uh, sometimes a wire brush is nice too to really get in there and scrub it all off. And then once that is all off, we'll clean the inside of the pan itself. All the gasket material has been scraped off and we have just a wire brush in our drill. And we are going to take that and knock off the excess junk. The key is to make this surface as clean as possible so that it seals up. Um, so just take your time, go back and forth because you don't want to come back later and have lots of transmission leaks. The pan is now all cleaned up and we are going to take a small flathead screwdriver and pop the magnets out of here. Now there are magnets here and magnets here um, and I suppose there should be one there but there's just not on this car. It has been serviced in the past and we're going to take a paper towel and just wipe the majority of the smudge off to start with. You want to get these nice and clean and they're going to leave junk on the paper towel forever so wipe it as clean as possible and then we're going to clean it up the rest of the way with some brake clean. And once that wipes clean, we'll do that to all of them. And then we will wipe the tray out with paper towels and then clean it up with brake clean until it's spotless. And then put the magnets back in and we're ready to move on to the next part with the filter. With our pan all cleaned up, we are going to take a T40 and remove the filter. There's one bolt here and one bolt down here on the other end. So definitely watch out because when you do remove the filter, you will have more fluid go everywhere. Before we stick the new filter in, if you look right here, the old seal, you can see it's still inside the transmission. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small hook like this and simply carefully without marring it, just pull it right out. Always check this because you don't want to have two seals up in here and have it screw up your filter change. We have our filter ready to go in, and before we put it in the car, we're going to take new transmission fluid and coat the ring with it. So I'm going to stick my finger down in the jug of fluid and just give it a nice coat. And now we're ready to stick it back up in the car. Now we are ready to slide the new filter up into place and then tighten the bolts on it. All right, here we have our freshly clean pan and we have our gasket lightly set on here. Uh, it's very delicate. Uh, you could rip it pretty easy so be careful with it. And we are going to take and stick a bolt in each bolt in each co opposing corner like this. I'm going to put one in on the side too. And like this to keep the gasket lined up when we stick it back up in the car. Uh, that way you don't have it slide off. You know you can move it around a good bit. It doesn't slide off. Uh, and it's just a nice safety precaution to make sure that you don't screw up your gasket putting it on. So let's go put it on the car now. Now we're going to take and put our pan up into position and tighten up the bolts that we inserted earlier. Alright. 
now that there are two in place, uh, we can just go ahead and start putting the rest of them in and then slowly tighten them up and torque them down. Now that all the bolts are snugged up on the pan, we're going to torque them in a semi-star pattern to 10 newton meters. We're going to go from one corner to another corner to another corner to another corner and just work our way around the pan torquing the bolts down to 10 newton meters. Once that is done, we are ready to fill it up with fluid. Now we're going to remove the drain plug with a 17 millimeter Allen or an 817. This can be bought at AutoZone or other places like that. Uh, we are just going to loosen the drain plug and remove it. So we're going to take our finger and figure out which way the opening is pointing and then we're going to take our hose and then slide it up through the hole and out through that spout or through the hole in the fill spout and now we are going to pump fluid into the transmission until it starts to drain out the hole then we are going to put the filter uh, or put the fill plug back in and start the car fluid has started to leak out the plug so we, we put the fill plug back in and we'll just kind of snug it up a little bit and now we're going to go up top and start the motor and run it through the gears. Now we're going to hop in the car, start it up and take it through the gears. Reverse, neutral, drive, All right, now we've taken it through the gears twice to make sure that the transmission sucks up all the fluid that we put in the pan. And now we are ready to raise it back up, leaving the engine on and running, uh, letting the transmission fluid come up to the proper temperature, and then we will add what remains to add to it, and then we'll be done with this process. With the engine running, we are going to use our thermometer, our infrared thermometer, to check the temperature of the transmission pan to see, we want it to be around around 40 or so degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And when that pan gets up to that temperature, we will pull the plug back out and fill it up with fluid till it drains out the plug.